Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Lance Ruggi with Discovery Education and springtime is just around the corner. Have you ever wondered how those eggs get to your house for eating and decorating? Today we're going to learn a little bit more about egg farming and that journey that the egg takes from the farm to your breakfast table. So I'm here at uh, Willamette Egg Farm with my friend Greg. Uh, we're in the state of Oregon and we have an exciting virtual field trip planned for you today. So Greg, uh, why don't you say hello to the kids? Hi kids and welcome to Willamette Egg Farms. I am so excited to take you around our farm for a tour today. This is part of a program called the Good Egg Project, which was started by America's Egg Farms to help teach you a little bit more about where your eggs come from and also help out some families in need, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. I bet you guys are ready to see what life on an egg farm is all about. I, I know I am. Uh, Greg, my first question, the hens get up really early, I bet. Is, is that true? Yeah, you know, and honestly, they do get up a little bit earlier than I do. And speaking of the hens, I think that's a great place to start our tour. So why don't we head out to the hen house with my dad, Gordon, and he's going to show you guys where the hens live. Thanks, Greg. Welcome to our farm. I'll bet you all live in different kinds of homes. Here on the farm, our chickens live in different kinds of homes too. We call them systems. In a conventional system, hens live in enclosures they use as nests. Here they have access to food and water and are more readily protected from sickness. Everyone asks how many chickens we have. When my uncle started the business in 1934, he had 400 laying hens. When I came to the business, there were about a million laying hens. Today, we have over two million laying hens. On some farms, hens live in enriched colony systems. While still enclosed, hens have places to perch and a nest area where they can lay their eggs. Aviaries are cage-free houses with multi-storied pens that provide several levels of floors. Birds can jump to different levels and also have access to areas where they can nest, scratch, and perch. In a cage-free floor system, hens roam around on the floor of the barn and have space to perch and scratch in the dirt. They also have a nesting space down the middle of the house. Thank you for joining me in the hen house. I have some hens to go check on. I'll see you later. So right now, I bet you guys have lots of questions. In fact, we have thousands upon thousands of students that are watching right now and participating. If you have a question on your screen to the right, just submit your question, type it in there, click submit, or have your teacher do that, and we'll do our best to get as many of the questions as we can answered today, because I know you have a lot of questions for our egg farmers. So. Uh, Greg, you mind taking a few questions right now? Absolutely. All right. So first question, this one came in from uh, Sean, Bethesda, Maryland. So Sean, thank you so much. Um, Greg, what made you want to become an egg farmer? That's a great question. So first of all, you have to understand that this is a family farm. And a lot of egg farms around the country are family farms. So when I was growing up, I enjoyed working on the farm. And it was a great way for me to spend time with my grandpa and my uncle and my dad because they were all working on the farm. And they would give me important jobs to do, so I felt like I was a part of things. And, you know, I just enjoyed it. It was a fun way to grow up. And I guess I always knew that someday I would eventually end up being an egg farmer. And today I'm actually the third generation in our family to help run this farm. Excellent. We're actually going to get to meet uh, your dad here uh in person a little later when he comes to join us for some Q&A. Did he give you an allowance when you helped out when you were younger working on the on the farm? You know, I, I didn't so much get the allowance. I had to go work and they pretty much paid me by feeding me, I think. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's pretty fair. I was appreciative. Okay. <laughs> so next question. This one came in from uh, Greenville, Mississippi, Miss Gates Kindergarten class. So thank you so much for submitting. Uh, how did the farm how did the farm get its name and, and how long has it been in business? Good question. So our farm was actually started in 1934 by my great uncle Tom. And uh, you know, he started out with just 400 hens at that time. 
and the farm was located here in the Willamette Valley, which is in the northwest part of Oregon. So he named it Willamette Egg Farms, uh, for, you know, for the valley that we live in. Okay, excellent. Um, question from the Bronx, New York, uh, first grade class. What's the hardest part about being an egg farmer? You know, probably the biggest challenge on an egg farmer, uh, on an egg farm that is, is that the hens are here producing eggs, eating feed seven days a week, 365 days a year. So our work never really ends. You know, if something breaks down on a weekend, we've got to go fix it. Okay. So that's a challenge. There's a, a second part here too, so along those lines. Is there a particular job that's, that's really difficult? Like what's the hardest job on the farm? Right, so in a little bit, we're gonna see the egg packing and that's a very hard job because the eggs are coming all day long and the packers have to take the dozens and put them in boxes and put them on pallets. And those guys, uh, you wouldn't want to arm wrestle one of those guys. They're pretty strong. All right. Uh, this question came from St. Ambrose School <laughs> in uh, Latham, New York, fourth grade class. How big is the farm? So back in 1934, we started with one hen house and about 400 hens. Today, we actually have about 25 hen houses and we're caring for about two million hens. Wow, wow. Uh, those hens, this is a perfect lead in. Charleston, South Carolina, great question. What types of chickens are on the farm? Are all the hens the same? Right, we really only have two different types of hens on our farm. We have brown hens and we have white hens. The browns are actually a Rhode Island red strain. The white hens are a white leghorn strain. Okay. Um, well, another great follow-up. This one just came in. Claire um, from St. Louis School in Clarksville, Maryland. Thank you for submitting your question. Are there just hens on your farm? Right. So hens are the ones that lay the eggs. And so, yeah, on our farm, we just keep hens. Okay. Uh, how many times a day do you feed the hens? In most of the houses, the hens are being fed probably four to seven times a day. And so what we're trying to accomplish is we want to make sure that the hens have feed all day long so that they can eat whenever they feel like it. Okay. Uh, this one from Asheville, North Carolina. We'll take one more right now if you don't mind. Uh, what's the shelf life of an egg from the, from the, <clears throat> the time the, the hen has their lays the egg to the time it's scrambled and on your breakfast plate? Good question. So rule of thumb with eggs, the cooler you keep them, the longer they last. So when you bring your eggs home from the store, you can easily keep them in your refrigerator for up to four weeks. But really, we recommend not keeping them that long. We think you should eat them quickly and just get back to the store and buy some more. Okay, that's good advice. So um, those are great questions. Keep the questions coming. We have thousands upon thousands of students uh, participating right now. So ask those questions. We'll do our best to get to as many of them as we can. Um, but I bet you're ready to see the hens a little more up close and personal right now. So earlier, Greg took us to visit his aviary hen house, so we wouldn't miss what makes this farm in particular so unique. Um, and since this only happens once a day, I think we should, we should show the students. Hi, welcome to our aviary hen house. So hen health and safety are top priorities on our farm, that's why I'm wearing this cap and gown. Yeah, I know I look a little bit funny, but it's very important that we wear clothes like this to make sure that we are keeping our hens safe and healthy. Are you an early bird? Well, this hen certainly is. And hens are very energetic in the morning, just like you probably are after a delicious breakfast. Did you know that this hen likes to lay her eggs between 7 and 11 in the morning? That's just one of the many things that makes this hen house so special. Aviaries are cage-free hen houses. These are a little different from normal cage-free hen houses because between the hours of nine at night and five in the morning, hens sleep in the pens and then wake up to lay their eggs. At about 10 a.m., the pens open up and the hens are free to jump out and roam around on the ground. So you have to be wondering, how do we get all of our hens back up into the pens at nighttime? Because with over 19,000 hens in this house, it would certainly take all day long to try to pick them up. Well, what we've done, just like you might train your pet to do tricks at home, we've actually trained our hens to climb back up into their pens at night. 
With our lights, we're able to simulate the setting of the sun in the evening and the rising of the sun in the morning. So, when the hens see that the sun is setting, they naturally climb back up into their pens and find their perch to sleep on. Then, when the sun comes up in the morning, they lay their egg. How cool is that? One of you wrote in and asked, how old are the hens when they start laying eggs? Well, the hens will actually start laying a few little tiny eggs when they're about four months old. By five months old, all of them are laying small eggs, and by about six months, they're all laying nice big eggs that we can sell at the store. It's been great showing you around the hen house, and you should know that no matter what system your eggs come from, they're always safe and nutritious. And that's no yolk. What a great hen house. That was pretty cool. I, I bet the students have questions about that, and uh, we actually got some more in while, while you guys were watching. So um, first one, do most farms have systems like that that we just saw? Right. You know, if you go to family farms all across the country, you're going to find that a lot of those farms do have, especially the conventional cage type system, because that's the most common. A lot of those farms will have cage-free systems. Some of those might be the aviary type. And there's even a few that have the uh, new enriched colony cage. You know, I, I think the important thing to remember, though, is that regardless of what type of house the hens live in, all of those eggs are going to be healthy and nutritious. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. All right, this question came in from Atlanta, Georgia, and I want to give credit to the kindergartners at Morris Brandon Elementary. Thank you for submitting. <clears throat> what food do you give the chickens? Good question. Um, so the, the food that we feed, and we make all of the feed ourselves here at the farm, uh, is actually primarily made of corn and soy. We also add some limestone, which is a great source of calcium for the chickens because they have to form the shell around the egg. So those are the primary ingredients, plus we, we do add some vitamins and minerals because we know how important that is. All right. Follow-up question from Fred, Three Rivers School. He wants to know about how many pounds does an average hen eat? How much? How many pounds of food? It's a great math extension here, too. Right. So in a month, one of our hens actually eats about seven pounds of feed. So over a year's time, each hen eats 84 pounds. So you can imagine two million hens. That's a lot of feed. That is a lot of feed. <laughs> wow. Uh, this one came in from Deep Creek High School, <clears throat> Chesapeake, Virginia, and uh, this question is about the the shell. The, the shell of the egg. Is it, is it hard when the hen lays it? Does it come out a different texture? Yeah, so the hen actually forms the nice hard shell inside, and so whenever she lays the egg, it, it's hard enough to uh, roll right out into the trays where it can be gathered. Okay. Uh, Westbury, New York. This is from uh, a first grade class, Mrs. Rogers' first grade class. So if you guys are watching, thank you for the question. Uh, how many eggs can, can a hen lay in one day? This is a pretty simple one. A hen pretty much just lays one egg a day. One egg a day. Well, there you go, Westbury, New York. Uh, there's your answer. Uh, this one from Benny in Pennsylvania. Uh, does the season affect how many eggs uh, the hens might lay? That's a really good question. So it depends a lot. So if your hens live outside, we'll find that the seasons will really affect the hens quite a bit in terms of how many eggs they lay, how much feed they eat. We keep our hens indoors where we keep them nice and warm in the winter time. We can keep them nice and cool in the summer. And we see very little difference as far as how much feed they eat seasonally. Okay. Let's take maybe one more question for now. And uh, we'll take this one from, this one came in from Raleigh, North Carolina. This is so cool. Keep submitting these questions. Uh, Miss Bowers, fourth grade class, what's the difference between a hen and a rooster? Okay, this is a pretty simple one too. So okay. a hen is a female chicken and a rooster is a male chicken. The hens are the ones that lay the eggs. Okay. Uh, this is a question that came in from a lot of, of students and they want to know, so a lot of students said, I, I like eggs because they taste good, but they want to know, are they, are they good for me as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, people talk all the time about how, how great eggs taste and they do taste great. But I think the kids need to know that they're also very nutritious. First thing you got to remember is that eggs are an excellent source of all natural protein. And protein is especially important for growing strong bones and strong muscles. 
And we also know that vitamins and minerals are very important. And wouldn't you know that eggs are a great source of some very important vit vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D. So I think that's probably enough about nutrition for now. I think it's a great time to visit Karen McFadden, who's our quality assurance manager. And she wants to show you guys how the eggs get from the hen house into the carton at our egg processing facility. Take it away, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen McFadden. I'm a quality assurance manager here at Willamette Egg Farms. I make sure that the eggs that you get on your table are the safest, freshest eggs available. Did you know that one million eggs go through this facility every single day? Think about how many minivans that could fill up. It could actually fill up 46 minivans. Egg farms across the country use cool technology like this to get eggs ready to ship to stores quickly. Here at our farm, all of our eggs are gathered and transferred on a conveyor belt to this processing plant. Here they get a good washing, like at a car wash. Then they go on to be graded. A grater examines the shell and the inside of an egg to make sure egg whites are thick and firm and that the yolks are high and round. Then they're weighed to determine what size they are. Small, medium, large, extra large, and even jumbo. One of the things commonly asked is how do we grade eggs? Yes, we do grade eggs. They get A's and B's just like you do. The old way we used to candle eggs was a person like this, holding eggs up to a light and looking through them for defects. Defects would show up as funny colors inside the white shell. Now we have a huge light and we still have a person looking at the eggs, but the eggs are electronically detected to get rid of the bad eggs. The eggs are then put through a crack detector to figure out if there's any cracks, if the shell's nice and strong. Then they're put through a weighing machine to weigh them, and we put all that information together to give them a double A, an A, or a B. Different types of packaging are used depending on where the eggs go. Dozen cartons are common in your grocery store. Flats are found in wholesale stores. Restaurants, bakeries, or school cafeterias might have their eggs delivered in one of these. Immediately after packaging, they are refrigerated and then loaded onto our delivery trucks to be delivered to grocery stores, restaurants, and cafeterias, and then to your breakfast plate. Did you know that most eggs make it to your grocery store in within 24 to 72 hours? Now that's what we call farm fresh. Back to you, Lance and Greg. Thanks, Karen. I know we have uh, a lot of questions about egg production, so why don't we jump right in? So the, the first question comes from Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, this is from Elizabeth. Thank you for your question. What's the shelf life of an egg from the time the hen lays the egg till the time it's, you know, scrambled and put on your plate? Good question. So, again, rule of thumb with eggs, the cooler you keep them, the longer they last. So when you bring eggs home from the store, you know, you can easily keep them in your refrigerator for four weeks and uh, they'll be perfectly fresh and good to eat. Okay. Uh, next question. This is from Sugarland, Texas. And I want to know this one too. Uh, how many different types or kinds of eggs are there? Okay, this can be a little bit confusing. Lots of different kinds of eggs. So on our farm, we have brown eggs and we have white eggs. We have all the different sizes of eggs. We have conventionally produced eggs. We have cage-free eggs. There's even nutritionally enhanced eggs like high omega-3 eggs. We have organic eggs and plus all the different types of egg products that we make. So that's actually a pretty big question. Okay, so that's one maybe for the, the students. Mrs. Whitaker, if you're out there watching, which I'm sure you are in uh, Sugar Land, this is a great one for your students to to do a little more research on because Greg rattled off at least 12. I lost count at 12. So there's tons and tons of types of, of eggs. So great question. Uh, this one came from Oklahoma City. Uh, this is from Trinity School and Jane asked, uh, how do the eggs get to the store? Good question again. So we actually have a fleet of refrigerated trucks. So that means that the big trailer the truck is pulling has a refrigeration unit on it to keep the eggs nice and cool. And then we deliver most of the eggs to the store ourselves. Lots of times we're into those stores about two times a week, making sure that they've got plenty of fresh, fresh eggs on hand. 
Okay. Uh, this question is from Zakaria in uh, Connecticut. Love that name, by the way. Uh, how do you transport the eggs without breaking them? Yeah, so to keep from breaking eggs is always a challenge because they're not very durable. So the packaging becomes very important. If you look at egg cartons, they have little cells that keep the eggs from bumping into each other. And then we can close the lid and stack them up and put them in boxes. And then those boxes are strong enough to where we can stack them on pallets. And uh, it's also very important that our drivers take it easy while they're driving to the store. Okay. Uh, from fourth grade class in Chattanooga, Tennessee, this question. How many eggs does the average person eat? So the average American consumer actually consumes about 250 eggs every year. So if you were to eat an egg a day for a little over eight months, you would be right at the national average. Okay. Um, maybe one more question for now. This is from Tanya in Churchville, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Tanya. Um, do, do the hens need roosters to lay the eggs? This is another pretty, pretty simple question. Uh, no, uh, hens actually do not need a rooster to lay an egg. Our hens start laying eggs right around, right around five months of age, and uh, they do that with or without a rooster around. Okay. Um, along those lines, when we were talking with your dad uh, just yesterday, he said the hens actually, they lay smaller eggs when they're smaller and the eggs get bigger. Can you tell the kids a little bit about that? Right. So. When a young hen is just coming into production, they do normally lay very small eggs. They're almost like practice eggs. So as they age, and by the time they're about six months old, they're laying some nice big eggs like what you normally see at the store. Okay. These are great questions. So um, continue to ask those questions. Type them in. Ask your teacher to type them in. Click submit. We're going to get to to a bunch more. Um, but. I'm sure, and there was a question that came up earlier, you know, along the mm -hmm. different types of eggs and kinds of eggs, and we talked about, you, you know, mentioned like liquid eggs and organic eggs and the hard boiled eggs, and so particularly like those, the liquid and hard boiled, how does that all work? How do they get into the grocery store? Right. So, you know, I, I'm sure that we're all used to seeing the, the normal shell eggs in the cartons that you see at the store. But did you guys know that there's a lot of eggs that don't go straight to the store? Those eggs, some of them get cracked and turned into liquid egg products. Some of them might get cooked and they can get packaged as uh, hard boiled eggs. They can be peeled. Some can be pickled. We even make deviled eggs. And uh, so I think now it actually be a great time to go visit Dan Barnard, who's our plant manager uh, over the processed eggs and he's going to show you what goes on over there. This is where we produce fresh, frozen, and liquid egg products, including egg whites, egg yolks, and whole eggs. Here at the farm, we even produce a number of products that are already ready to eat, including hard-boiled eggs, pickled eggs, and my personal favorite, deviled eggs. Our facilities are specially designed to produce egg products. Just like you hard boil your eggs at home, we have a place that hard boils eggs too. We also produce all sorts of hard boiled egg products like pickled eggs and deviled eggs. We also have what we call breakers that produce eggs that restaurants and food manufacturers use in baking, cake mixes, and other dishes. One of you has asked why are some eggs harder to peel than others? Well, it has to do with the age of the egg. The older the egg, the easier it peels. So if you want easy to peel eggs, start with older eggs. For both liquid eggs and hard boiled eggs, the process begins the same way, with fresh eggs that are cleaned, kind of like a dishwasher. For hard cooked and other ready to eat products, the eggs travel down a conveyor belt, through a cooker, and into a cold water bath. The cold water bath stops the cooking process and separates the shell from the egg. They then go through a peeler, which cracks the egg and pushes them out of the shell, resulting in a picture perfect hard boiled egg every single time. One of you has asked, which is the best way to hard boil an egg? Well, the best way to hard boil an egg is to put the eggs in a pot, cover them with cold water, bring the water to a boil, and immediately turn off the heat and cover the pan. Wait 12 minutes, drain the water, and put them in ice water to shock the shell away from the egg to make it very easy to peel. Hard boiled eggs sure are popular around here. Here at the farm, we package hard boiled eggs in two packs, 12 packs, which are sold in retail stores, and 25 pound packages that are sold to salad manufacturers. In fact, we can cook up to 25,000 eggs per hour, making sure there's plenty for everyone. 
Just like you and your friends will grow up to have different jobs, not every egg is going to go to the grocery store or the restaurant. Many eggs wind up in this facility where we make a lot of products that wind up on your table in other ways. Cookies, cakes, muffins, in your school lunch cafeteria, or even your potato salad. I hope you all have enjoyed seeing the, the journey of the egg. And uh, before we go, Gordon, who's back from checking on the hens, is uh, going to join us for a final Q&A. So Gordon and Greg will answer uh, a few more questions before we go. So first question. Um, what happens to cracked eggs? And this actually came in from Aiken, South Carolina. So thank you guys for submitting. So what happens to, to cracked eggs? Good question. So around here, we try not to waste any eggs. And because, you know, eggs can get damaged, we do end up with some cracked eggs. So what we do with those, as long as the egg isn't leaking, we're able to take those eggs and use them in liquid egg products. So all those eggs that are cracked have to go through a pasteurization process, but we can still use them. Okay. Uh, this question comes from Mrs. Spaziano's third grade class in uh, Piscataway, New Jersey. Two-part question. First part, which states are the, the, the big egg-producing egg states? So the top three egg-producing states are actually Iowa, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, Oregon is not in the top three. Oregon is a beautiful place to, to visit, though. So uh, <laughs> second part of this question, supply and demand. So for the kids out there, supply and demand, the question basically is, is there anything that affects the, the amount or the number of eggs that get into the grocery store throughout the year? Is it pretty consistent? That's an interesting question. So on our egg farms, we're actually very consistent in the number of eggs that, that our hens are producing. Because remember, the hens wake up every morning and lay an egg. Mm -hmm. So we don't see a lot of change there. But what we do see is some seasonal purchasing by consumers. So during certain times of the year, like Easter, the holidays, consumers will be buying more eggs because they're either coloring eggs or they're doing some a lot more cooking at home. And so that's when the supply of eggs will come down. Okay. Uh, question for you, Gordon. This one comes from Arizona. Um, why do some eggs have two yolks? That's a very good question. We hear it asked lots of times. People are really curious about that. And uh, what it is, most of those eggs come from young hens that are just learning how to lay eggs. And they will start sometimes and release two yolks at one time, and then they will form the egg, a larger egg, around those two yolks, so you end up with one egg with two yolks. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, Mrs. Berger's kindergarten class got this question here. Niceville, Florida. So thank you guys for submitting this one. Uh, do the eggs need to be refrigerated? Yeah, so again, the cooler you keep them, the longer they last. And so what we recommend is actually keeping them in sort of a central area in the refrigerator where the, where the temperature stays nice and consistent and keep them in that carton because that'll help protect them from getting broken while you're, while you're uh, storing them. Okay. Uh, Gordon, you mind taking another question here? Sure. Uh, Mrs. Boyd's class, second grade class, asked how many eggs that you guys produce here annually? Our hens produce about 600 million eggs each year. It would take 1,800 large uh, semi-trailers to hold that many eggs. Six million or six hundred million? Six hundred million. All right, so kids, six hundred million eggs. They usually come in dozen cartons, yes. you know, twelve. So quick math, and I want to see if anybody can type the answer into the chat window, because I already know it. Of course, I did it earlier. Six hundred million eggs <laughs> divided by twelve. Put it in the chat window. I'd love to see who can get that first, and tell us where you're from. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of eggs. All right, so final question. It's my favorite question. It's my favorite question of the day. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> this comes from Mrs. Cox's kindergarten class, San Mateo, Florida. And it came in from some others as well. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I'm going to let you both answer. So first, Greg. Uh, Lance, this has been a contentious issue. Uh, you know, normally egg farmers across the country, uh, we get along pretty well with each other, but this one has stirred up some problems. Uh, but 
You know what, we, our company, we've been doing this for over 75 years now, and I think we actually have the answer for this, and we can settle this right now. What we've seen on our farm over the years is that we never get eggs unless we have hens. Therefore, once and for all, we can settle the issue, the chicken clearly came first. And, and this is a, it's a family farm and you've learned pretty much everything that, I would, would you say you learned pretty much everything you know about egg farming from your, from your dad? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, so Gordon, I would assume you would agree with your son? Not entirely, no. <laughs> uh, I think it's pretty obvious that we would not be able to have chickens if we didn't have eggs because the chicken comes from the egg. Dad, we've been over this. We've talked about this. All right, well, uh, okay, well, let's, uh, those are great questions, and we'll leave this one for a healthy father-son debate a little bit later. Chicken or egg, egg or chicken, but uh, great questions, everyone. Before we go, uh, Greg, do you have any closing thoughts for our, our kids, thousands of kids that are watching right now? Well, kids, thank you so much for coming along on our tour and asking all these great questions. Um, you know, uh, making sure that you and your families get the eggs that you need is really only part of what we do. Egg farmers across the country, family farms like ours, are also doing a lot of other things to help out in their communities. One of the things that we do here is that we donate about a half million eggs to our local food bank every year. That's enough eggs to fill about four big school buses completely full of eggs. And would you believe that egg farmers across the country actually donate about 12 million eggs every year through the Good Egg Project, enough eggs to fill about a hundred big school buses. That's a lot of eggs. It is a lot of eggs. Well, thank you all for, for joining us today. Gordon and Greg, we can't thank you enough for hosting us here. I mean, this has been an amazing experience, an amazing virtual field trip. Uh, we want to thank you all for your amazing questions. Um, I do want to encourage everyone that's, that's watching and participating today to check out the Good Egg Project's education station. On the site, you'll find lesson plans egg recipes, activities, and, and you're there right now, actually. So please check that out. Share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Uh, in a very short period of time, we're going to have the archive from today up there as well, so you can even share the virtual field trip um, with whomever you want. So thank you again for, for joining us today. It's been a, been a lot of fun. Um, so from, from here in Oregon, we want to say uh, have a good day and a good egg. Bye. <laughs>